Catch up on the business headlines with the Bite Size Business Breakfast. Oh, we're talking property now, commercial property, which according to the real estate firm CRC has seen a massive jump in both sales volumes and values. Very pleased to be joined this morning by Andrew Elliott, who is CRC's head of commercial here in Dubai. Andrew, thanks for coming in. Good morning, Brandy. Good morning. Richard. So two numbers that have grabbed our attention. A 38% increase, you say, in the number of commercial units sold in the first half of this year, but their value up almost 90%. Are you suggesting that what's selling is going for more than double what it would have done a year ago? If you look in specific locations, um, the freehold locations, places like Jamira Lake Towers, places like Business Bay, then definitely we're seeing that sort of growth. Um, I think we've come out of a very weak market in 2016 when the oil price is corrected. We've sort of seen a slump in commercial real estate. And thankfully, post-pandemic, due to what I think the Dubai government's done and what the economy's doing locally, we have seen a huge amount of growth in the last sort of 18 months um, since we came out of the lockdown. So when we're talking commercial units, what are we talking here? So most of our numbers on this will be on commercial office space. So that will be sort of, I'm not going to say A-grade office space, but if you look at the rest of the office space, business space, Shake Side Road, um, JLT. If you look at warehouse space, while we have seen a huge amount of occupancy take up, which was very low in 2019, um, we're definitely seeing rates are starting to climb again in these areas. Let's break that down and look at what they tell us. If we take the offices, for example, I thought we were all starting to work from home. I thought companies around the world were trying to get rid of the offices they'd bought. This is a fantastic thing about what the Dubai government's done. Um, if you look at the free zones, they typically dictate that you have to have a minimum amount of square footage for your visas. So every free zone company will have 100 square foot. It works out roughly to be 100 square foot per visa. So while people may be working from home, companies have still had to maintain their office space to maintain staff visas. Is it largely secondary market? I mean, it was only a couple of, gosh, it wasn't even a year ago that we were talking about potentially repurposing some of the older office stock. Um, if you look at it mostly now, we've had no new construction of commercial real estate in the freehold market. I think the last building we had was probably now three, four years ago. So we've had no new stock in, in the market. If you look at the residential market, obviously they've built huge amounts of uh, real estate. People have flocked into Dubai, people from the region, people from obviously new countries in Europe that are moving over here. You look at those people that have moved over, they've set up their own businesses. And we get into that stage now where we're sort of running out of office space. So who is buying it? I mean, you've given us a bit of a, a taste there, but can you break it down international to, to local buyers? I think if you looked at it sort of a year ago, just after COVID, we were primarily looking at a lot of uh, local investors. If you look at it now, you tend to find it's a lot of companies that are looking at end use, in which case they're looking, looking to occupy the space. Um, and as well as that, we still have quite a few of investors that are coming into Dubai and buying spaces. And where are those investors coming from? We've had, we've seen in the last six months, probably quite a few from Europe. We've seen a few Russians. Um, we've seen a few from India, which is always a strong area for us. Um, we've also had a few from China, which is also another strong area for commercial real estate these days. And what does all of this mean for the rents that those who own the Unfor office buildings? Unfortunately, as anything goes up, everything else goes up with it. So commercial rents have been rising. If you look at the rent rates that have gone up in probably the last year, um, while I'm not going to say we've got close to doubling, you tend to find that we have gone up significantly, significantly in price. I think as well as the um, rents going up, you tend to find that a lot of tenants are now starting to lock in longer term leases to prevent themselves being in a place where landlords are putting rents up or landlords are obviously trying to get them out of their premises. Is there a difference between the flash swanky new space that we see? I mean, you, you talk about not having more stock coming on. I'm thinking of ICD Brookfield, for example, that, that opened up and the stuff that's been around for a while. ICD Brookfield's a unique one because it is in DIFC, so it's very specific to the trade license. That comes under a DIFC trade license um, where you look at ICD has done fantastically well. The occupancy is obviously filling up very quickly, but it is also limited to DIFC companies. So it's companies that are in the financial services market versus the general population of Dubai that are working in whatever industry they're in. Let's look at the warehouses, which you say is another aspect of this. What does an increase in demand for warehousing space say about the economy? 
I've always felt, and I've been in the market now for 17 years, that whenever the economy picks up in Dubai, warehouses is one of the first um, that fix, picks up. You've got to remember that 90% of products in the UAE are probably imported. So anybody who's supplying to the market, you'll typically find warehousing is the first asset class I feel picks up. And then you tend to find offices pick up after that. Retail has also been a massive um, increase in the last sort of 18 months. Everybody was saying after COVID, retail spaces on the high street are dead. But honestly, if you look around, you can see that all those retail spaces are full again. You don't think of companies owning their own retail space, though, do you? You tend to think of them as renting it. You typically find uh, retailers don't buy because they'd obviously rather lease another space fitted out and occupied. They'll get a better return than buying that space. So you tend to find that that will typically be an investor that buys that retail space and then looks to lease it out. And again, where are those investors coming from? They, We have a huge demographic of those, but I would say primarily uh, European. We have a lot of Russian investors in the retail market. We also have a lot of Indian investors in the retail market. And 30 seconds, how do the returns for that compare than what you'd get on a global stage? Um, I think commercial terms in Dubai are definitely probably on the highest. If you look at them, we typically get between 7 and 8% net returns, um, which is a lot higher than you would typically find in, say, London or somewhere like that. Um, and obviously, there is also a little bit higher risk here as well. Andrew Elliott is CRC's Head of Commercial for Dubai, speaking to us um, about what they have seen happen to the commercial real estate space in the first half of this year. A 38% increase in the number of units offices, warehouses and retail spaces that have been sold in the Emirate, but a near 90% increase in how much they have sold for. Thank you so much for joining us on the Business Breakfast this morning. Just the highlights. This is the Bite Size Business Breakfast.